When the Pilgrims left England in 1620 to start a new life in North America, they could not have known what they would have to endure during the first cruel winter there. Nor could they have known it was a place of great suffering in the years before they even arrived. Their problems started before they even set sail, as described in interviews with a couple of book authors in the PBS documentary, The Pilgrims. If you wanted to go to America, to Virginia or New England, you should try to leave February or March at the latest, so you could get there in the spring and give yourself a full spring and summer to become accustomed to the new world. And to do all the things you had to do before the winter set in. In fact, of course, they ended up leaving England in September, which was about as bad as it could be. They arrive at the worst possible time. Winter is just coming in and it's the end of December by the time they begin to start building houses. What happened when they arrived is described in detail in Philbrook's book, Mayflower, A Story of Courage, Community, and War. Not until Wednesday, December 20, did they decide where to begin building a permanent settlement at the area near the Plymouth Rock. The future site of Plymouth Plantation had much to recommend it. Rising up from shore was a 165-foot hill that provided a spectacular view of the surrounding coastline and a very sweet brook that flowed beside it. The biggest advantage of the area was that it had already been cleared by the Indians, and yet nowhere could they find evidence of any recent native settlements because, from 1616 to 1619, disease from European explorers and fishermen brought this centuries-old community to an end. This map, drawn by the French explorer Samuel de Champlain, shows the villages and cornfields in what later became Plymouth County, Massachusetts, known by the natives as Patuxet, before diseases from Europe devastated the Native American population. Unaware of the location's tragic past, they decided to build their houses on what is called Coles Hill, overlooking the salt marsh. That night, December 20, 20 people remained on shore. On December 21, the wind-lashed Mayflower had already become a grim hospital ship. In addition to colds, coughs, and fevers, scurvy tormented the passengers. Two men passed away on board the ship that week, and, on Friday morning, Mary Ellerton gave birth to a stillborn child. In the weeks ahead, the death toll required them to revise radically their initial plans for how many buildings to construct. They continued working even as death reduced the newcomers to half their original number. It took them two more weeks to complete the first building, a 20-foot square common house. Illness continued to spread among them. The common house soon became as full of beds as they could like one by another. Like the Native Americans before them, they must struggle to survive on a hillside where death had become a way of life. In the days ahead, so many fell ill that there were barely half a dozen left to tend to the sick. Progress on the houses fell to a standstill as the healthy ones became full-time nurses, preparing meals, tending fires, washing the loathsome clothes, and emptying chamber pots. William Bradford, the future governor of the settlement, wrote of their struggles in his account of Plymouth Plantation. That which was most sad and lamentable was that in two or three months' time half of their company died, especially in January and February, being the depth of winter and wanting houses and other comforts being infected with scurvy and other diseases, which this long voyage and their inaccommodate condition had brought upon them. So as here died sometimes two or three of a day, in the foresaid time, that of one hundred and odd persons, scarce fifty remained. The book also references Thomas Prince, a later governor of Plymouth Plantation, who arrived soon after the first winter. He reports that one died on the voyage, six died in December, eight died in January, 17 died in February, and 13 died in March. 
with two, sometimes three people dying a day throughout the months of February and March. There might not be a plantation left to defend from the so far rarely seen Native Americans by the arrival of spring. Almost everyone had lost a loved one. By the spring, 52 of the 102 who had originally arrived in Provincetown, Cape Cod, were dead. Whenever the alarm was sounded, the sick were pulled from their beds and propped up against trees with muskets in their hands. They would do little good in case of an actual attack, but at least they were out there to be counted. The pilgrims also tried to conceal the fact that so many of them had died. They did such a diligent job of hiding their loved one's remains that it was not until more than a hundred years later, when the runoff from a violent rainstorm unearthed some human bones, that the location of these ancient, hastily dug graves was finally revealed. On Saturday, February 17, 1621, someone realized that two Indians were standing on top of what became known as Watson's Hill, about a quarter mile to the south. When the pilgrims approached them, the natives ran off to the shouts of a great many more concealed on the other side of the hill. On Friday, March 16, the pilgrims saw another one of them atop Watson's Hill, and he began to walk toward them very boldly, past the rows of houses. Some of the men stepped into the Indians' path. The Indians saluted them and with great enthusiasm spoke the now famous words, Welcome, Englishmen. And so began a truce and an uneasy friendship between the pilgrims who survived the first winter and the native tribe who greeted them, though there would be conflicts with other tribes soon after. In part two, we'll look at how the Native Americans saw the first winter for the Mayflower pilgrims and why they waited so long to make contact with the new arrivals in Patuxet. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books and films featured in this video.